For over the past four decades, the Ford Ranger has been a well-known nameplate in the compact pickup truck segment. Now here in America, we actually saw the Ranger leave the States back in 2011 from 2019, but the company decided to bring the Ranger back in 2019. But sadly, that truck, when it first came out in the US, already felt old because it was based off of a platform that came out in other markets back in 2010. Now, thankfully for 2024, we are finally getting the all new Ranger that other markets are getting in the form of this truck. This right here is the brand new 2024 Ranger Lariat with the FX4 off-road package. And this is a comprehensive redesign. We're talking about a new frame, new powertrains, new styling on the outside, and an all new interior with all the latest tech gadgets that one could want. So today we're actually out here in Salt Lake City, Utah to finally get behind the wheel of the new Ranger. And the big question I want to answer, has Ford made enough changes to this mid-sized truck in order to steal the sales crown away from the Toyota Tacoma? That's what we're here to find out. Now, before we start talking about the all new exterior design for this fifth generation Ranger, I thought I'd pop the hood and show you guys what's powering this thing. Now, Ford actually expanded the availability of different engines for this all new generation. But of course, most of you are probably going to be happy with this motor here. This is the base engine in the Ranger. It's actually a carryover motor from the previous generation. The company's tried and true and well-known 2.3 liter turbocharged EcoBoost engine with gasoline direct injection. The numbers are the same, 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. That's the most standard power that you're gonna find in the segment and it all goes out through a 10-speed automatic transmission. Ford says that is a segment-exclusive transmission because everyone else is using an 8-speed versus the 10-speed that you find here. Now, the base uh, drivetrain configuration is obviously rear-wheel drive. This particular one that I'm showing you has the part-time four-wheel drive system where you can also get a locking rear differential. If you guys want more power, there's also an optional 2.7-liter EcoBoost twin-turbo V6. That'll be available later this summer. That makes 315 horsepower and like 400 pound-feet of torque. Um, the Raptor is going to have its own unique engine, a three liter twin turbo V6, but we'll save that for a separate review. In terms of fuel efficiency, this powertrain is rated at 20 in the city, 24 on the highway. That's on regular grade gas. This has roughly a 19 gallon fuel tank. So you're looking at around 400 miles of range between Phillips. Uh, Ford doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. I would estimate it to be in the low to maybe high six second range. We'll have to see uh, what we can get out here in Salt Lake City, although we are at around 5,500 feet above sea level. So I'll ha maybe have to wait until I get one back home to get an accurate number. Uh, in terms of the payload capacity, this will uh, carry a maximum of around 1,700 pounds in the bed. It'll tow a maximum of 7,500 pounds. That's just shy of the 7,700 pounds that you get in the top uh, versions or the top towing ver spec versions of like the Colorado, for example. And as this truck sits, it weighs in at around 4,400 pounds. So it's pretty much average in terms of the curb weight uh, in regards to the competition. But let's go ahead and close up this hood, which as you can see is supported by a prop rod and talk about the exterior styling. Now, when I first saw this all new Ranger, I was really impressed. I like the design of this thing because as you guys know, this is the global Ranger that is built in like five different assembly plants. Although here in the US, it'll be assembled here uh, in Michigan, obviously. Uh, and it essentially looks just like the other market Rangers, although Ford had to make a couple of changes for the US spec market. Uh, this particular one that I'm showing you is painted in azure gray metallic. It's an extra 1000 bucks. It's kind of like a bluish gray uh, that works really well with the lines of this Lariat trim. There's a base, uh, in terms of the trim structures, there's XL, XLT, Lariat and of course Raptor. It's the first time we're getting the Raptor here in the US. You can see the lim or the Lariat has its kind of its own unique finish to the gloss gray grill with the blue oval emblem front and center. You can see the headlights, the Lariat and the Raptor trims will get the upgraded performance LED. So you have a projector style LED low and high beam, LED daytime running light, uh, you have LED fog lights as well. The lower trims of the Ranger will also have an LED, but it will be a reflector style. So I believe you won't get the LED turn signal that you get on this trim. Uh, you also get some nice silver trim here. But overall, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design. Obviously, in this segment, we've got new versions of the Canyon in Colorado, the new Frontier, and of course, the Tacoma, which is the best-selling truck that you're going to find in this segment. Now, moving around the side profile, I mentioned this is built off of an all-new frame. It has an all-new suspension, all-new engines. And in terms of the dimensions, this is where Ford has simply 
simplified things for the US market. The fourth generation offered a super cab half door configuration and the super crew. Now in America, Ford has made it basically easy. You get one choice, the crew cab, which is the four full size doors and the five foot bed. They stretch the wheelbase of the truck by about two inches. It's around 128.7 inches long. That's longer, but it's around three inches shorter than something like the new Tacoma, for example. Its overall length is 210.6 inches long. That's actually about an inch shorter versus the previous generation. The big difference, of course, is they widen the track by about two inches. Uh, and they also widened the entire truck by about five inches. So that really gives us more space in the interior. And it also is going to improve the space in the bed, which we'll talk about uh, in just a second. In terms of the ground clearance, uh, this is where the Ranger isn't quite as high off the ground as some of the competitors. This model that I'm showing you here with the FX4 off-road package has around 9.3 inches of ground clearance. The Raptor will have around 10.7. So again, that's good, but it's not going to be like the most what you're going to find like a Colorado ZR2 Bison. For example, you can see the wheels. These are the wheels that you get on the Lariat trim. I actually love the 18-inch wheel design. You can see it has like a gray or it has a black uh, painted pocket that's kind of like a matte black. It also has the machine look on the outside. And you can see with the FX4 off-road package, you have this kind of all-terrain Goodyear Wrangler Territory tire with the raised lettering. It's a 255 by 65 uh, R18. You have an independent front suspension along with a leaf spring solid axle at the back. So that's pretty common stuff along with four wheel disc brakes in the pickup truck segment. Now I also like the wheel arch moldings here. You can see it's painted in that same gloss gray that you get from the front. You can see the mirrors. Uh, they have an integrated turn signals. There are a full, there is a full 360 camera because this truck also has their latest version and their pro trailer backup assist, which is also something we find in the F-150. It's class exclusive uh, in this segment. Segment. The one thing the Ranger, however, doesn't offer in the U.S. at any price is a sunroof, which surprised me. You cannot get a sunroof even as part of an a la carte option. So let me know in the comment section below if that could be a potential deal breaker for you. I did speak to Ford about that, and they did say that they are prepared to add the option of a sunroof if there's enough demand. So. We'll have to wait and see uh, when this vehicle goes on sale uh, and see what uh, cu the customers are gonna be saying. Now, in terms of the bed size, like I said earlier, it only comes as a short bed, a five foot bed, which could be an issue if you guys want you know, those choices. The Tacoma really is the only one that offers the four full size doors with the six foot long bed, which is a much more usable configuration. But you can see looking at the rear, styling is also very clean for the truck. You can see you have kind of like an LED combination design with the tail lights. You can see there's uh, incandescent for the turn signals and for the reverse lights, but the brake light is actually uh, uh, an LED accent for the uh, actual taillight assembly. You can see uh, tow packages included on this particular trim. You have the usual four, uh, uh, tow pin connectors over there with the integrated parking sensors, which is nice. The one thing I also really appreciate is the step that you get for this truck. So you can see some competitors put the step like down here where it really doesn't create a very wide platform to step or to stick your feet in there. Now here on the Ranger, you can see it actually has enough room where both of your feet can actually fit in there. And because it's placed a little farther forward, it allows you to have better access into the actual truck bed, uh, which is a very useful feature. Now, in terms of the tailgate, this is where Ford made some pretty big improvements. First of all, they widened the truck uh, by almost five inches, which allows you to basically now put a four by uh, eight sheet of plywood in here laying flat. In the previous generation, you couldn't do that. So that's again, a nice you know, practical change that Ford has made. Uh, and you can see uh, this model also has the optional spray and bed liner for around 500 bucks. Highly recommend that. There's also a drop in. You have these new 400 watt power inverters where you can plug in some accessories or some tools back here. Although it's not quite as great as the Pro Power on board that you'll find in like the F 150, for example. The tailgate, as you guys saw, is also damped, which is nice. The previous generation, I remember back in 2019, it wasn't damped, and that was kind of an issue that I wanted to see Ford fix. You can see there are also some kind of nifty little, you know, accessories here. You have like a built in ruler in the tailgate, there's a bottle opener here. Um, and then you also have these little uh, indents here, or this little panel where you can uh, attach like a C-clamp here to you know do some work on the actual tailgate. So overall, in terms of the practicality, obviously Ford has made this better. And in terms of the payload, it is still pretty class competitive, but you should know that the payload rating did drop by about 200 pounds compared to the previous generation. So while the outside of the new Ranger is obviously all new, Ford also pulled out a lot of stops here to give us an all new interior that finally feels modern compared to the previous generation. Now, first of all, this one that I'm showing you is the Lariat trim. This is the only trim that's gonna come with leather seats. Now, obviously you can see this is the light beige color leather. The seats are also heated. You have a 10-way power driver's seat here, an eight-way on the passenger side, and it also has three-person memory. I believe that's the first time that Ford is offering a memory seat function in the Ranger, at least here in the US. In terms of the door panel materials, you can see 
The upper portion here has a nice soft touch injection molded plastic. There's some faux stitching along the top here. You have some gray uh, painted plastic here along with some flat pla a flat gray panels, which is nice. Padded area here where you rest your elbows. The window switches, they feel nice and high quality. They're, they kind of have like an aluminum metal accent to, to them. Only the front windows, however, are one touch up and down. Uh, I kind of wish four just made it one touch for all four. You can see down in this lower area here, it is hard touch plastic, but you can see there's a good amount of storage back here. Uh, but overall, the interior makes a really great first impression. Now, as I get in, you can see with around 9.3 inches of ground clearance, it's not as high as some competitors, but there are step running boards that this model has as I get in and shut the door. The door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of an all new frame that also underpins uh, the Ford Bronco. I believe it's something very similar. Now you can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. Uh, it is the typical Ford key here. I'm not really the biggest fan of this key in terms of how big and cumbersome it is, but it has the usual buttons here for unlock, lock, remote start, and then a panic function. There is no remote tailgate release. That's something that you can find in some competitor vehicles. And you can see this Lariat trim has push button start, but you guys have to go for the Lariat or the Raptor trim. All the other trims, including the XLT Ranger with like options on it, still has an actual traditional key fob. You'll have remote keyless entry, but again, Ford decided to make push button start only on the high trims. It's not even available on the lower trims. But what they did, however, improve is the tech because every Ranger will come standard with an eight inch digital display or the Lariat and Raptor will have the larger 12.3 inch full digital cluster, which is something similar that we've seen to, for example, the Ford F-150. And then my test truck here, because it's a Lariat, comes standard with the bigger 12 inch display in the center stack running Ford's Sync 4A system in terms of the infotainment system. The base system will be a 10 inch display on the lower trim XL. The 12 inch display is optional on the XLT. And you can see my phone is connected via wireless Apple CarPlay. And this pretty much is similar to what I've seen in like the Ford Mustang Mach-E. The F-150 also has something similar to this. Uh, with the Sync 4A system. I am surprised, however, because Ford just introduced their new Ford Digital Experience software on the new uh, Ford Explorer and the new Lincoln uh, Nautilus, uh, for example. Uh, however, it is not making its debut here in the Ranger, so I'm expecting the company to eventually update the software, perhaps for the 2025 or 2026 model year, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, in terms of the rest of the uh, interior here and the dashboard, you can see there's a nice soft touch injection mullet area with the uh, a faux stitching across the dash. You can see it's the same thing over here. There's actually a second glove box here uh, that is included when you guys go for the Lariat and the Raptor trims. This upper portion of the dash is a hard touch plastic material. The steering wheel, you can, as you can see, is also all new. It's got uh, a new design. It's kind of like a three spoke wheel. It has a manual tilt and telescoping function. No paddles on the wheel, but you can see lots of buttons here to control your Ford Copilot 360, which is standard equipment across the board. However, if you want adaptive cruise control, that's gonna cost you uh, as part of a technology package on the XLT. Standard on the Lariat trim, this vehicle now offers adaptive cruise with stop and go. That was not available on the previous generation Ranger. The horn. It's actually really loud. It actually kind of startled me. Uh, so that's nice. Even though there's a small truck, it doesn't have a small truck puny horn. Horn, no heads up display. That's something that some consumers really prefer to have, but uh, the Ranger sadly doesn't offer that feature. Although I think only the Colorado and the Canyon are the only trucks that may offer a heads up display. Uh, you can see uh, down here in the rest of the center stack, I've pretty much showed you videos on Sync 4A. So you can see uh, the native system works pretty well. It includes you know things like factory GPS as well. Um, in terms of just going back to the home system here, you can see there is embedded GPS into the truck, uh, which also looks pretty nice. Nothing super fancy, but it gets the job done. It's nice to also have the option. Most of you will use the CarPlay and pull up, for example, like Google Maps, uh, and that will kind of give you the navigation function and a much better looking map display. The menu structure kind of stays the same here. You get your audio control, or your climate controls down here, which you can see uh, dual zone temperature control is included on the Lariat trim. It's optional on the XLT trims. You can also push that little menu here to bring up you know, more options uh, for uh, the climate control function. You can see there are heated seats in this car, in this truck, heated steering wheel as well, three level heated seats. But if you're looking for cooled seats, it's not available. You can get cooled seats on something like the new Tacoma, for example, or the new Canyon in Colorado. So I'm surprised Ford didn't want to add that feature. I do like how they did add some actual hard buttons down here for the climate as well. So you can actually you know turn off the radio here or you can adjust the climate temperature via these actual knobs. There's a wireless phone charging pad here, which I believe is standard on the XLT trims and up. You can see my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely. There's a USB-C and a USB-A charger. You also have a little bit more storage here. Ford says they completely redesigned the center console to give you additional storage here. Larger cup holders, the shifter, this controls the 10-speed auto. 
Uh, you can see this is a shifter that's unique to the Lariat trim. The XLTs and the lower trims will have a different look shifter. You can see there's a button at the top of the shifter here. You push that and you kick it back to go into reverse. You can see there's your full 360 camera. My test track actually has their Pro Trailer Backup Assist, which I had a chance to try out. It essentially is kind of like a separate steering wheel for your trailer. You control it via this little knob here if you guys are backing up a trailer. And it works pretty well, especially if you're a novice. Uh, versus you know having to do it manually the 360 camera also has really good resolution and quality it has rear cross traffic braking it has um, parking sensors front and rear uh, you can also go into here and you can change the different angles and views and turn off the parking sensors so this all is very nice it is obviously going to be included on the higher trims of the truck and it also you know fits nicely into the actual uh, display over here. Now you can see uh, going into drive, you just pull it forward. There's also shift buttons here to control, uh, you know, the 10 speed auto manually. You can see there's an M button there and then you can see there's a plus and minus to actually control uh, the shifting uh, because there are no panels on the wheel. Uh, so again, I like the way the shifter looks. It takes a little bit of getting used to because I was actually trying to hit these buttons first, but remember the button is here to unlock it. You have an electronic parking brake here and then you can see push that button. That's going to give you um, the different camera angles, but it also will give you your drive mode selector. So for some reason, I'm actually, I push that and then I should be able to adjust the drive mode here. So you can see once I rotate that, it'll go into an eco, a sport, a tow haul mode. There's also a slippery. You can see the graphics look pretty nice. Um, it's very similar to what I've seen in the new F-150. Most of you will probably just have it in the normal mode or the eco mode anyways. Uh, you can see I have to kick it all the way back to the left to go back into the normal drive mode, but all that works pretty well. I also like how it's a big knob over here. Uh, it makes it really easy to use. Um, there's also an automatic parallel park function, auto start, stop, defeat. This vehicle is not electrified, but it does give you that. And you can see down here, instead of like a piano black plastic that's going get, to get scratches and fingerprints, I like how Ford used instead of flat uh, plastic material instead. Now you can see there's a nice padded armrest here. Uh, and if you open this up, there's kind of two levels of storage. That's a relatively deep storage area as well. There's a 12 volt power outlet in here. Uh, which is definitely nice for storing some items. Um, in terms of above me here, uh, there's no sunroof, which is good if you guys want maximum headroom, but I really do think it's kind of a mistake that Ford's not offering a sunroof. There's also now a power sliding uh, rear window back here. So this rear window, as you can see, um, is optional on the higher trims, but if you want to you know, close it off. I, I really like that design. That is a feature that the old one truck had, but it wasn't power, I believe. So that's nice. In terms of the glove box, you can see uh, it's not damped uh, or lined with felt, but it's a pretty decent sized bin style. There's also more storage here and that secondary glove box on the higher trims of the truck. But overall, as you can see, the interior definitely feels a lot more modern. In terms of the space, it feels pretty similar uh, to the previous generation. This Lariat also has an optional Bang & Olufsen stereo or standard on this truck. Uh, and it's definitely a nice sounding audio system. If you guys are an audiophile, highly recommend it. But overall, I like all the changes that Ford has made, but I am surprised to see that it's still using Sync 4A as opposed to their new Ford digital experience software that we just saw on the new Explorer. Now, taking a look at the back seat of the new Ford Ranger, Ford only offers this, remember, as a crew cab with the four full-size doors. And this is where those of you who are looking for more back seat space for your taller friends or family members, you're gonna wanna check out an F-150, but Ford says you have around 34.6 inches of legroom. Now, 34.6 obviously isn't a lot. You're gonna find around six more inches of legroom in like an F-150, but this has around an inch more legroom versus the Toyota Tacoma, and it also is still a pretty usable amount of space. Now, in terms of the seat back, you can see it pull this strap here, it does the usual thing where you can flip it up. There's a little bit of storage underneath here where you can hide a couple of items, which is a nice touch. And uh, this vehicle also has a new feature where you can fold this down. And as you can see, it now folds completely flat. The previous generation didn't allow you to fold it completely flat. It still kind of had like a little bit of an angled area. This is gonna be nice if you need to store something in the cab, which is good, where it can basically lie flat. So that's definitely a very nice touch. But let's go ahead and get back here and show you guys the space. now. Once I close the door, you can see this is essentially where I'd have the seat to drive from my driving position. Material quality back here is hard touch plastic, so it's not quite as nice as the front seat area. Uh, it is nice and padded over here where your elbows would rest. You can see window controls, they still feel the same high quality, but it's not one touch up down like it is on the front. You can see there's also two storage cubbies or mat pockets in the actual seat backs. You have a big open area here where I'd love to see Ford put some rear seat air vents, but it's a Ranger, so uh, everything is to a certain price point. You do have USB charging ports, an A and a C. You have an actual 120 volt uh, power outlet there, which is nice. The floor is not completely flat, so the middle passenger is not going to be able to get quite as comfortable. But because the truck is around five inches longer, you could actually sit three people across back here. Although, again, it's not going to be as roomy as an F-150. Uh, fold this down. You can see there's a nice armrest uh, with two cup holders. So most people are going to use the Ranger, you know, for two people on the outboard seats. And compared to the new Tacoma, I have to say this is much more usable, but it's also pretty comparable to something like the new Colorado and GMC Canyon. 
So here we are on this snowy, cold, and also rainy day in Salt Lake City. We are actually sitting at around 5,500 to 6,000 feet above sea level. Sea level. We're kind of on our way back to the hotel. It's a mountain road. Uh, so if I have an opportunity to do a zero to 60, I might try to take it. But if not, uh, we may have to wait until <laughs> we actually find a decent road, which of course I happen to find a decent road as I'm driving down this mountain road. But that's always the fun part about filming in a new area. You don't really know what you're gonna get until you actually start driving down. But my first impressions of the new uh, Ranger are quite positive because the last time that I drove the previous model, I believe it was like four years ago. And remember, while the Ranger was like, you know, returning as a new truck back in 2019, it was built off of an old truck that dated back to like 2011. So this new version is now new from the ground up. New frame, new available V6 engines. It's one of the few trucks in the class that still offers a V6. New technology, new design, new Raptor trim. I mean, we'll be driving the Raptor tomorrow, uh, but First impressions are wonderful in this new truck, new truck because it has an all new suspension, uh, it has an all new frame. The truck itself just feels so much more refined. It really uh, goes down the road with a level of smoothness that the old one didn't have. Instead of that jittery feel that you got in the previous generation with the ride quality, Ford has really you know, smoothed everything out. It feels pretty much as nice as all the newer trucks as well, although I haven't had a chance to drive and spend more time with like a Tacoma Limited with its adaptive variable suspension. This is making a great first impression and it just feels like you're almost driving just a downsized version of the uh, F-150. But uh, I'm gonna try just a quick acceleration run here, but sadly my uh, GPS lap timer doesn't really, or my uh, zero to 60 timer doesn't have service, so I'm not gonna be able to try it right now. Um, actually, oh wait, there it goes, it's starting to get service, so drag meter, and we'll go ahead and see what we can uh, we can get. We'll go ahead and we'll switch the drive mode over to sport. I'll back you up over here. <laughs> <laughs> Which turned off the start stop, and let's go ahead and just floor it and see what we can get. Feels pretty sluggish off the line. All right, we got 7.7 .7 seconds, and Rob also has his little, <laughs> his little timer off of his phone. He got 8.04. 8 now, we are actually at, um, we are slightly on a downhill gradient. It says a 4% downhill gradient, so, and we're also at elevation, which, is also, which means that we're not gonna be making like the full 270 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. So I'd estimate when I get this truck back home for a week, it probably will have a zero to 60 time in the low to mid seven second range, again, Right now, it doesn't really count because we're going downhill. Uh, and I also had the truck in just two-wheel drive there. There wasn't really any wheel spin, although the road is a little damped. Uh, this model that we're driving has the part-time four-wheel drive system, uh, which is uh, a nice feature to have. The uh, locking rear diff that this truck has is also optional. If you guys want a full-time four-wheel drive system, it's only available on the Raptor version of the Ranger. But going around some corners, this is still a body-on-frame truck uh, with a live axle in the back, so it's not gonna be sporty. I mean, if you're looking for a mid-sized truck that drives more like a car, go ahead and buy the Honda Ridgeline because that's essentially a car truck. It's not a body-on-frame vehicle. But hey, if you guys are looking for an actual truck, this feels like a truck, but it also feels like a much more refined truck. And I think that's what Ford kind of nailed is just giving the truck that modern feel where it doesn't feel like an old vehicle because that's that was my issue with the old rangers it felt like an old truck right from the start even though we didn't have you know the vehicle in the states for around seven years um, this is basically like a rectification of that now in terms of the visibility i can see out of the ranger pretty nice out of the front the side the a pillar here is actually pretty skinny uh, this truck lacks like an available digital camera rear view mirror that's what you can get in some competing uh, vehicles this truck also has the Ford Co-Pilot 360, which is standard, which means it has automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist. Uh, the Lariats do come standard with adaptive cruise control with stop and go, although you cannot get Ford's excellent blue cruise system uh, in this truck yet. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll eventually offer that at a later date. The seats in this particular model, these are the sandstone seats. It's the leather interior. They actually feel pretty comfortable. Uh, I like the positioning of the seats. I like the padding. Uh, they also have reasonable amounts of bolstering to kind of hold you in place. Uh, and the engine itself, it sounds like the typical, you know, EcoBoost four-cylinder. It doesn't have that, you know, v like deep throaty growl that you guys would prefer in, you know, some of its competing vehicles. But 
At the same time, this is a base engine and it makes 270 horsepower, which is you know the most powerful base engine that you're gonna find in the segment, uh, which is nice. Because remember, the Tacoma's base engine makes 228 horsepower, uh, so that's definitely a big improvement, obviously, over that. If you guys want the V6, there is that twin turbo 2.7 that'll be coming at a later date. We don't know pricing just yet as of this filming of that new uh, V6. Now, in terms of fuel efficiency, this model is rated at 20 in the city, 24 on the highway. The trip commuter here says we're averaging 19.9, but I don't really you know, wanna take that because it's not um, uh, indicative of you know, real world testing. This is a really early pre-production and we're just kind of doing a drive. Um, oh, like, oops. I was like, sorry. Oh, I'm like too far away. <laughs> let me let me get closer. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and I have to open my window, of course. I forgot I had to. The door. I can't really open the door though. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> okay. I was like, no. Here in front of the old <laughs> no. <laughs> he looked at me like. A... No, it's okay. okay. I forgot what I said last. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. Yeah. Um, Fuel economy couldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's right. Sorry about the brief interruption. We had to actually give a ticket to get out of this like little park that we're at. But I mean, overall fuel economy, I'll have to wait until I get one back home to test uh, and see what we can actually get. It actually is a pretty good number. 2024, 400 miles of range. It has a nearly 20 gallon fuel tank. It does run on regular gas, which is nice. Uh, but overall, you know, the Lariat trim, I definitely like all the features and technology that Ford is throwing in. It's really easy to drive. It's got good visibility. It's got great tech features as well. Uh, and I think for the majority of customers looking in this segment, the, uh, the Ranger is finally going to be, you know, a solid choice. <laughs> but uh, again, for those of you who want even more, um, the Raptor is gonna offer more capability and power. There are rumors of Ford bringing eventually a hybrid version to the US. They have already announced a, a plug-in hybrid in Australia, but sadly, they haven't said if it's gonna come to the US. But for those of you who you know, don't need maximum power, this base engine and the rest of the refinement of this truck uh, should be uh, really easy recommendations to choose one over some of its competitors. So as most of you know, the sales king in the midsize truck segment is the Toyota Tacoma. The company does almost a quarter million Tacomas every year. And there was a time where the Ford Ranger was the best selling truck in the US from 1987 to around 2004. I think Ford right around that time peaked at around 150,000 sales. Sadly, uh, in 2023, the last generation Ranger only did around 32,000 sales. Now, when that truck first came out, there was a time where Ford was doing almost 100,000 sales. So obviously for this all new fifth generation, I expect the company to want a bigger piece of that sales pie. And after spending the day driving the all new fifth generation Ranger, I'm pretty impressed with all the changes that Ford has made. I mean, obviously being on an all new frame where it kind of shares some architecture with the Ford Bronco, the new uh, powertrains, although the 2.3 EcoBoost in this model is technically a carryover platform. I should be driving the V6 version sometime later this summer. And if you guys also wanna see our review on the Raptor, stay tuned because that'll be a separate review posting about two days after this video. I'll be, I'll be sure to include a link in the description below. One of the biggest changes that Ford made is just in the refinement. This is a much smoother truck to drive in everyday driving. The ride quality is just so much better than the previous generation. It doesn't have quite that jittery, unrefined feel of the previous truck. The interior also, while it has pretty average materials in term and average space, the technology is just much improved. Love the new 12 inch display, although I'm still not quite in love with Sync 4A. There are times where it lagged a little bit, although this could also be a really early pre-production truck. Uh, and in terms of the de design, uh, I love the fact that this has some styling cues, obviously, for, from the Ford F-150. Even though here in America, the F-150 is basically the truck that you think of, uh, Ford likes to think of the Ranger as kind of like the global F-150 because this truck does massive amounts of sales worldwide. And with the introduction of this new version, I expect Ford to also continue that trend. Now, if you guys are looking to put the new Ranger in your driveway, this is where the new truck obviously is gonna be more expensive, but it's also not the most expensive new midsize truck on the market. The base XL version is gonna start at around $32,600. That's before the $1,400 destination charge. If you guys want four wheel drive, that's gonna cost you around $3,600 extra. Now, most of you are probably gonna go up to the XLT trim. That's gonna give you most of the features that you want. That's gonna start at around 36, just under 40 if you guys want four-wheel drive. The Lariat is gonna start at around 43 or around 47,000 with four-wheel drive. My test truck, however, has several options on it from the uh, FX4 off-road package um, to 
uh, the uh, upgrade charge for the paint color as well. With Destination and the spray and bed liner and a couple of other extra additional add-ons, this model here comes to around $52,400. I know 52 grand is definitely a lot of money, but if you guys are comparing it to like a GMC Canyon AT4, um, that's gonna cost you, or the, the Denali version is gonna cost you in the mid 50s. A Toyota Tacoma can also get into the mid $50,000 and we don't have final pricing of the Tacoma Hybrid, which I should be driving sometime next month as well. So obviously Ford has, you know, increased the price but they've also increased the technology they've increased the performance and for those of you who want the ultimate ranger there's also the ranger raptor which i'm looking forward to driving uh, tomorrow and you guys will also see our full review on that in about two days so with all that said hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 ford ranger lariat if you're also looking to see the latest vehicles i'm testing be sure to follow me on instagram at redline underscore reviews like us on facebook and as always guys please keep subscribing to the redline reviews youtube channel for all the latest reviews thank you so much for watching i'll catch you all in the next video